I'm here with Steve Wanzek. This man is fantastic. He's been an aviation professor. He's been active duty Air Force. He was a pilot in Vietnam. He helped take care of President Reagan. And now he is the manager of our airport, CMI, the University of Illinois Commercial Airport. And he's been nice enough to be able to show us around today so we can find out what are the inner workings of an actual commercial airport. So our first stop is at the uh, crash rescue uh, fire station, I guess most people would call it, but we are not a typical fire department. Our yeah. fire marshal over here is John Regal. Hey, John. He's a tour for that. Okay. Yeah. Good you to doing? see you. Good Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. So you have some uh, some fancy equipment that you hope you never have to use. It's never have to use. All we right. Do a lot of training and maintenance and upkeep on the vehicles, but uh, we don't want any disaster here. Excellent. Excellent. So, hey, let's go see it. Well, this truck is a 2003 Oshkosh Striker. Oshkosh Striker. Oshkosh from the air sh famous air show. They have at Oshkosh all the time, it's right? It's right, uh, right next to the airport. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's an Oshkosh Striker 1500 model. It's got 1500 gallons of water, and that tank would be in this panel that has our name on it. Okay. And it has 210 gallons of 3% foam, so we can mix that together, aerate it, and we can discharge it from the turrets and hand lines on the front of the truck. Right. Can we go see the the guns? Sure. Okay. It's, this is like a military vehicle, you know, but but it's, it 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 shoots out anti-fire stuff. Wow. Yeah, and it looks so cool. Yeah. yeah. So on the yeah. front of the truck, we've got a roof and a bumper turret. This one is a special turret. It's three agent turret. So we've got water, foam, and then dry chemical capabilities on the front in this tip if here. If that's in case there's a the gasoline you put the dry chemical on or you put the foam on it? Sure, aircraft have got a lot of aviation fuel on right, board so right. that's what we're mainly dealing with fire wise. Okay. okay. This particular turret will also have the ability to drop down about 18 inches off the ground so we have a better opportunity of sweeping at the base of a fire. Uh -huh. And you can almost see underneath it's got a couple of under truck nozzles so if we have the need to drive across any areas that are still involved in fire we can douse them as we go. Wow, wow, you can like walk on fire. Yeah, uh, okay. another cool feature about this truck is the infrared camera up on top. In times of inclement weather or darkness, we have the ability to see heat with that, so we can find people that are walking around mm -hmm. or spot fire if we have heavy fog or rain. Okay. Yep. Have you had to use this? Well, we've used, uh, we average uh, maybe a dozen or so calls out of here in a year, but that's okay. general aviation and commercial air traffic. It's anything from a, an indicator light that won't come down. Uh, to a little a smoke in the cockpit kind of thing. Okay. We've not had a serious crash uh, in, uh, geez, at least 10, 12 years here at the airport. So good. it's been longer than that, I think. Good, yep. good, good. That's great because I fly out of here all the time. <laughs> like the safety record. All right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, flying flying's still one of the safest ways to get around. You bet. Absolutely. This particular truck we can operate with just a crew of one. It's joystick wow. controls, just like you'd find at home on your video games. <laughs> and triggers and uh, thumb controls to operate any of the agents you want or select the pattern that you want out of the turret. Wow, that's a big expensive video game. Uh, let me just ask, how, how much does, I mean, this is awesome. You need this, right? I mean, and you have to make sure that if there is some crash or something, you want to save everyone. You have that fire out. You want to be able to do it day or night. Uh, and obviously that's going to cost something, but so how much was this truck? Uh, this particular truck back in 03 was in the neighborhood of 625,000, I believe. That was fully equipped with hand tools and, and the like, air packs and things. Yeah. Well, that's nice. They threw in a few extras. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, they threw them in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and then it meets all kinds of FAA specifications as far as the grade it can drive on in, a, in an incline and then speed ratings as well. So for a big old truck, it'll get up and go. Wow. truck you do not want to see coming up to your airplane.
Does, are these these hangars are big enough for the the commercial jets that come in? No, the regional, regional jets. Okay. They're relatively small. They they're in this hangar. Okay. Which is hangar three. And they get four of them overnight. Well, three now, but they can do four overnight. Four overnight. Uh, now there used to be. I remember being here, and there were. I thought there were 727s. That, that yeah, we bring in charter stuff. I don't okay. know that we've ever had. Back, back there was Piedmont. Regular. There was Piedmont Air that back went to way back. Then. Yeah, <laughs> way back. Dayton. That was before me. So before you. All right. All right. I've been here too long. That was when that that was the terminal. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, this is the Flight Star maintenance hangar, and okay. as you can see, they're doing. Oh man. Look either scheduled or. Routine maintenance on. So, I remember this from when I was flying with my dad, but if you notice on the, on the runway, or on this taxiway, is that yellow, that double yellow line in the black. And you never cross those lines until the tower says you can. So how long is this runway? This is a 6,500 foot runway. Wow, over a mile long on this runway. The longest runway we have is 8,000 feet. Wow. And the 2-2 two two is the compass heading? It's or two the two last zero. two digits? So a runway okay. gets its designation from the compass heading, rounded okay. off to the nearest. So Coming in. Yeah, look at that, an airplane is landing there. Essentially 220, plus or minus. The okay. plane's probably first touched down, right? Okay. This is a shared baggage claim. In fact, everything's shared now. Uh, behind the ticket counter is a what used to be a baggage makeup area, where each airline would have its own area where they would bring a card in and your bag would go on an individual uh, bag belt back and then they would take it out to the airplane. Well, now the TSA has to check all the bags, so we have a common screening area for bags, a common pickup area, they're taken out and then they're returned here. The, the tug and the baggage, uh, whatever it is, device, they drive in here and this thing just goes and uh, it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's nothing special. You've seen this on the other side. It's just, this is what it looks like here. So we have all of the national type recognizable car rental. We actually have, I think, seven or eight. If you count the ones that are double booked behind a counter. This, this device has really been pretty amazing to me. It used to be after 9-11, until we got this, that they had to literally go through every bag. Now, this, the sensor and the, I would love to know how the software does all this, but somehow they can clear 95% of the bags without having to open it. But there are certain things, including the bad stuff. I mean, if you've got something that's potentially, a, you know, a, an explosive device or something you can't identify, it's going to trigger it and alert the operator. Then they have to hand clear it. But they get a chance to look at the screen image first and then determine whether it could be cleared just by looking at it or whether they actually have to open it. But things like peanut butter is perfectly legal to uh, to ship or honey something like that that will trigger it and every time your bags would get searched if you have that but 95 percent of the bags never get open now as a result of having a machine like this the uh the jet bridges on two and three this is jet bridge four are the new ones that we did three or four years ago whatever that was this one used to be on jet bridge two as part of the process, this was the best of the three bridges that we had. We moved it over here and then sent to scrap the others. 